Greetings friend, I will show you how to solve this puzzle from round 7 of the Sudoku Grand Prix by using hidden errors. There's also another part of this puzzle you might find particularly tricky. Before I get to the puzzle, I do want to take just a few moments to recognize some special people in the Smart Hobbies community. First, I want to welcome some new Smarty Party members, Randall Howell and Bernard Patton. Also want to thank Randall, John Brown, and Carol for buying me coffees. Thank you so much for your support. I do invest my support back into the channel. I'm currently raising money to go to VidSummit, an amazing YouTube conference where I hope to learn more tricks of the trade in order to give you better content. Next, a big shout out to Yoshi Baroshi for giving me the correct solution for the September reward puzzle pack involving skyscrapers. I released a solutions video to my Smarty Party members to show you how to get all those correct solutions. I'm releasing my next reward puzzle pack October 1st, and it's called Twins Remote Pair Sudoku Challenge. Unlock the puzzling past. The puzzles are themed after famous sets of twins. To get this pack, join the Smarty Party now by clicking on the membership link in the description below. Now, let's turn our attention back to hidden pairs. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you want to notice is you have these twos here. And this two means there's only one place for a two in block five. And then you can see these two sixes and this six. There's only one place for six in block four. We're just doing some simple cross hatching. And then with the nines, you got this nine here means a nine can't be in this spot. You have this nine means a nine can't be here. And then this nine means a nine can't be in this spot. So we can solve for a nine. It's a hidden single along column five. That's a little tricky to spot, but it's right there. And we're now with these two nines and this, these two nines, you can solve for a nine in block four. Okay, now let's look at the fives. You have the five here and here it means only one place for a five in block five. And now with these two fives and this five, got a place here for five in block six. So far, pretty smooth. You got these two fives here. You can solve for five in block two. And then this is uh, kind of neat. You want to look here now at row six. All right, I got six digits filled out. So we got three cells remaining you see we have a one two three five six nine so we need a four seven and an eight well i see the four and the eight in this column so i know this has to be a naked single seven and then what you want to do is just stay right here and block six you'll notice now with this two cutting across you can solve for a two here and with this eight you can solve for an eight here which is our last spot as a three you'll see this type of clumping very common in competitive puzzles if you can get through a block right away that means you don't have to go and look for these cells anymore. And it gives you a lot more to work with. And now back to, I think, kind of the trickiest thing to see in this puzzle. Is like, look here in column two. You, know, you got five digits filled out. So I will focus on it. Where can a four be? Can't be here because of this four. Can't be here because of this four. And it can't be here because of this four. So this is a hidden single four. Not a hard to spot. In fact, I want you to share this with a friend. See if they can solve the puzzle and they find this four. Also ask them to subscribe to Smart Hobbies so they too can solve these competitive Sudoku puzzles. Okay, after doing that four, this is going to help us out with most more fours. Because we got those two fours and this four, we can solve for a four right here in block three. These two fours and this four, we can solve for a four right here in block nine. Okay, and now it's going to help us out with the sixes because we put this four here. Got these two sixes, we can solve for a six here. In block one with these two sixes and this six, solve for six in block three. Looking good. And now we can actually do some more work with the eights. You got these two eights. Means an eight can be right here in block nine, uh, kind of in column eight. And so we just need a one, three right there. I'll mark that to kind of show that we can solve that a little bit later if we are able to figure out one of those cells. And now we get to the spot where we're going to need that hidden pair. You look here in block eight, where can a three be? You have a three cutting down column five. You have a three cutting across row nine. So the threes are limited to these two spots, or so it seems. So what I just did is called Snyder notation. Two possibilities for a three here in block eight. So I'll mark them. In case I can solve one of these cells, I can solve the other one for a three right away. So as it looks, 
it looks like the three is going to be in one of these two spots. However, we have a hidden pair we can work with. You notice how you have a six, nine here, six and a nine, and a six, nine here, almost five and six. Since they cover these three cells, the only two places left for that six and nine would be right here in column eight. And since the six and nine are limited to those two cells, no other possibilities or candidates can be in those cells. This is called a hidden pair. And when you notice, since a three is not one of these two candidates, we can eliminate the three. It's gonna bump out that Snyder three. And then we're gonna be able to solve this cell now for a three. You wanna solve hidden pairs and understand their definitions, get some solving diagrams and video to check your answers and download my free Sudoku solving guide and you'll get all of that and solve puzzles like this even better. It's in the pinned comment below. By solving this three, now we can make more progress in this puzzle. Cause you got these two threes and this three means we can solve this cell now for a three. And then we can work our way through row eight. Okay, what we need is a one, two and a seven. What you'll notice here is you got a two seven here and then you got the two repeated here. This is my, what I call my famous neat, naked triple trick. When you have two of the three possibilities, two of them see one cell and another one's repeated another, you can solve all three. Cause you know, this has to be your one, that would have to be your seven, and this would have to be your two. We can do all three of those right away. Okay, after doing row eight, let's look in column six now. What we have is looks like a one, seven and an eight. We're gonna be able to do this neat naked triple trick again, because you have a seven and eight looking at this cell, and then you have the seven repeated right here. We know this has to be the one, that's the eight, that's the seven. I love it. All right, after doing column six, let's look in column five, we have a full house. Eight digits are filled in, so we only got one remaining. It's gonna be a one. We can solve that for a one. And then with these two ones and this one, we can solve for a one here. We have a full house here, so we can solve this cell now it looks like for an eight, which means this is gonna be your seven to finish up row five. From there, we're gonna be able to make some more great solves. Cause what we're looking for here is you got, looks like a four and an eight. I got my eight there. So here's your eight, here's your four, meaning that's gonna be a seven and this is gonna be a four. Okay, making good progress here. After doing all of that, Let's look now in column seven. What do we need? Looks like a two, seven, nine. Okay, can we do the neat naked triple trick again? And we can. So you got a two and a seven looking at this cell. You got the seven repeated right there. So we know this has to be the seven. This has got to be the nine. And that's got to be the two. Awesome. So we just solved all of those cells. And now we need a one and a six here. I got my one there. So here's your one. Here's your six. We're going to disambiguate that six, nine hidden pair that helped us get all of this great solving in. Awesome. Okay. And now let's kind of move on here. We look like we need an eight and a four. I got my four here. So here's your four. Here's your eight. Okay, great. And with these two eights and these two eights, I'm going to switch to the little cross hatching and get that eight knocked out. All right. And now... What do we need here? Looks like a two and a five. So I can't do the two and a five. I'll mark it, but I know I can do better than that. What else I'm looking for? It looks like we can go right here. And when it looks like a two, three and a five, well, I got my two and a five right there. So this actually has to be your three. Which means this is gonna be a one, that's gonna be a three. Okay, now we have a full house and we're gonna be able to get some more quicker solving in because that's gotta be your seven. And now with this three, there's no place or three except for this spot in block two it means this has to be the one with these two ones in this one we can put a one right there you see there's a two five here so i know this also has to be a two five but i got two there so i can actually solve all three of these cells that's a five that's a two that's a five and then i can solve the four cell put a two right there and guess where the five goes it's right there and our last cell is a nine I only showed you a little bit about the power of hidden pairs. Check out this video to see some more. Thank you so much for my supporters, my Buy Me a Coffee page, and my Smarty Party members. And thank you so much for watching.